The first global summit on the effects of yoghurt was held at the 2013 Experimental Biology Meeting in Boston. A key issue was, of course, bone health in children and the elderly. Dairy products obviously brings a lot of uh, key nutrients uh, to, uh, to children, but also teenagers and adults. It brings, uh, obviously, calcium. Uh, it brings a lot of vitamins, and it's a very good source of protein. And in that respect, the, uh, the yogurt in the dairy category uh, is even better from the point of view that it brings additional protein. But adolescents need more nutrients for bone growth than just calcium. During the adolescence, the bone capital is doubling. So this means that uh, it's an accelerated bone growth during which we need to mineralize the bone which has been newly formed. And the mineralization is obtained through calcium and phosphate. And then we need also some well-balanced diet, including proteins, since the proteins are also the regulator of the hormone IGF-1, which promotes the growth of both in the longitudinal and radial way of the bone. Vitamin D is another important issue in this context. There are some discussions about vitamin D. Uh, should we put more vitamin D in yogurt, for example? Some countries add vitamin D to milk. Uh, we realized recently that vitamin D is essential and lacking in, in many countries. Uh, so the daily allowance for vitamin D has been increasing. So it's probably a good idea to uh, increase vitamin D in those products. In both adolescents and the elderly, these requirements translate into official guidelines. There are several recommendations which are relatively different from one uh, scientific society to the other. But all together we can say that we need at least one gram of calcium element per day. And the best would be to take it within the meals. And in terms of proteins, the recommended daily allowance uh, are officially 0.8 gram per kilogram of body weight. But protein intakes could become a higher priority in older adults. But now the geriatricians, based on new data, particularly in older people, it seems that the amount of 1 to 1.2 gram per kilogram of body weight are more important in terms of muscle and bone health. In this respect, dairy products are the main source of calcium in most countries. It's often argued that you could eat calcium from you know, green leafy vegetables, but in fact you'd have to eat so many servings of green leafy vegetables that it's, it's really not feasible. So in terms of getting calcium, dairy foods are really the, the predominant source. So we have to think in terms of equivalences between foods. We should remember that one litre of milk is more than 1,000 milligrams of calcium and 32 grams of protein. Obviously we cannot drink one litre of milk every day, but uh, with the uh, a system of the equivalent saying, well, we could have uh, uh, one or two glass of milk, one or two yogurts, a piece of cheese. The final conclusion of the summit at EB 2013 is pretty clear. It's easy to reach the level of the recommendation, which is three different servings a day of uh, dairy products, and this will provide enough calcium, approximately two-thirds of the need of calcium, and also uh, 40 to 50% of the need of proteins.